Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Now, this is going to be like a vloggy style video today, uh, only because we've got some updates to fill you in for, for 2024. What we are going to talk about is moving the shop around because it's getting a little bit clustered in here now and some of the things that I've built before are just not needed. So we're going to move the shop around, we're going to talk about some lumberjack tools and we're going to talk about a brand new toy I've got in a box just over there, which I'm very excited to get out and put it together. So, let's go talk about some lumberjack stuff. Let's talk about these two. Now, got this one first, a while ago, Maker Central last year, and it has been a godsend in this workshop. I can now work with rough timber, and that is beautiful, because it saves me money, which is amazing. But there was two issues I had with this machine. One, it kept blowing fuses, and two, the dust collection underneath was shocking. So, as you can see, the dust collection, when running in planar mode, with just the dust bag on the back, gets clogged up in mere seconds. You run more than one board through this machine and it is gonna be short. But I reached out to Lumberjack and said, any idea what I can do about this? And they said, well, how about a 75 liter dust collector? That might help. The dust collector I had in the shop before was just a standard Henry VAT. The 100 mil port on this machine running underneath here, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, has fixed the issue. Now, this works beautifully now. We have very minimal chips underneath left over when in planar mode and in thickness of mode it's just as good. Now the other issue that I had was this fuse blowing. I've gone through quite a few fuses. There's the simple reason that this is a 13 amp socket ring. I don't have a 16 amp socket that can handle the amount of power that this machine pulls when it starts. So what I've been finding, if I start the machine turn it off because I've forgotten something or I'm not fully prepared and I'm not happy to do a cut, it will cut out if I try and put it on again. Because the fuse inside is getting too hot and it's not getting time to cool down enough before I pull that power again. Now I did bring an electrician in and I did check that I did wire the plug properly so thank you for that, all the comments below. Now what the electrician did say is that I need to replace the wiring in the garage because it's not fit for the 16 amp stuff that I need. So what I will be looking for in the future is to probably do that, but I am looking at moving, which means the workshop has to move. So I'll probably just install that in the next shop. In the meantime, the solution is don't turn it on again too quickly. So now let's talk about this little beauty. I've had this one for a couple of months now. It's worked perfectly well with the planar thicknesser. It works amazingly now that I've got the dust collection on the table saw sorted, and I've even got it sorted with the bandsaw. So what are my issues with it? Well, there's only one, and that is still this switch. The electrician that I had came in, told me he wasn't happy to fiddle with it. And I freely admit that we shouldn't be fiddling with electrical switches if we don't know what we're doing. But my next door neighbor, who does know a lot about electric, has said there is a way around it. I can install an override switch on here, which means it will override that power switch. I'm gonna hopefully do that soon, and then we'll see whether it works with the clicking Amazon plug thing that I've got. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for interrupting. It's uh, Paul from the future. Just um, letting you know that everything I talked about, still perfectly valid, would work. You know what also works? A little bit of wood and some cable ties. So what we've done is a little block of wood, cable ties, and zip tied it around. Now that has worked really well. The copper connection inside now connects when it loses power, so it reconnects again. And yeah, it works, so that's all I'm gonna worry about. Yeah. That was a lot easier than taking it apart, putting a new switch in and stuff. Not recommending this necessarily, but it worked. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room that I addressed in my review video of this, and that's duct work. I wasn't planning on putting ducting in for this workshop because I'm actually planning on moving. Unfortunately, the house that I wanna buy is probably not going to be ready till this time next year. So the plan is to put some ducting in over the roof and the walls and things like that. But the problem is, where do I put it? Because this is big and I don't want it at the front of the shop. So the plan is to put it over here. Fortunately, that means that my precious April Wilkinson lumber cart is going to have to go. I'm sorry. I put a lot of effort into this. This is probably one of my first big builds. Now, if you want to watch it, I'm going to put the link over there. But I watched April's video on making this. 
And it was probably the first big video that I thought, yeah, I can actually do that myself. So I did, and I built it, and it's been amazing. But I don't make furniture, and that was the plan for this. It's big enough to fit a full 4x8 sheet of plywood. But I don't use full sheets of plywood. I barely even use scraps of plywood for templates. So unfortunately, this is going to go. And I am very sad about it. But anyway, the Lumberjack 75 litre chip and dust extractor is going to go in the corner over here. Now, this is a debacle of a corner. There is stuff here that I have no idea what it is. But we're going to try and clear it, trying to get rid of it and sort it out. Which means I may be able to keep half of it. Half would be fine because that would give me a fair bit of space here. Which means the dust extractor can go in the corner and I can have the ducting going along to there, up and over to the table saw and over to the bandsaw because I don't need it for anything else yet. When Lumberjack eventually send me a table saw, that will go here and the workbench will probably go as well, which means I'll have a smaller workbench. Ducting can go over the top. But it was be sad to see my baby go. It served me so well for so long. So I need a minute. <laughs> okay. Next is this lovely little present I've got here. Now, some of you may know that it was Black Friday not that long ago. And I may have treated myself to a lovely little laser. This is the Otha Laser Master 2 Pro S2. And one of my good friends, uh, Woodshop51, has one. And his is perfect for what he does. And it should be perfect for me. But it looks pretty good. I did a little bit of research. I've been looking for a laser slash small CNC for a while. So you all know the lovely mallets that I build. Now this is mine. It is a beast. It is too big and wieldy for anyone to actually use. And to be fair, I think I may, re may reshape the handle. And for a little bit of time, I've been trying to batch some of these out. Now these are almost ready to go. They need to be sanded and finished. The main reason I wanted this is because these are so close to being finished, but I need to brand them. Now I don't want to put my old brand on anything anymore. New mallets for the new year, new laser, new logo on it. But I also wanted custom logos as well, because I want to offer on Etsy and on my website the ability for you to put your own brand on it, because that's half the fun of it, isn't it? So I'm going to hopefully soon be able to put my own brand on and your brand on as well. And then obviously I can do custom chopping boards and all those sort of things to keep the bills ticking over because that's one of the things I can't offer now. And we all know that custom stuff sells better than non-custom stuff on Etsy, annoyingly. But I hear you say, where am I going to put it? Because we all know I've got bugger all space in the shop. Mainly because the wife takes over half of it. Forget that because she might see the video. Now my initial thought was to put it here. Now the laser is 400 by 400 mil bed size, which would quite happily fit under here. But the thing that I was worried about is this isn't the most stable bed in the world. It does, as you can see, get covered in dust. Now I could quite easily build a surround around here, but do I really want to do that? When it's right next to the table saw, means we can't have it running while I'm trying to use the table saw or trying to move the table. So, yeah, second thoughts about that. So, that leads me to this space here. Now, as you can see, this is pretty much just a dumping ground for a road of rubbish. So a lot of this stuff can go, but I think this is my plan. This I'm gonna turn upright, which means I can fit in the laser, hopefully, here. This is just a wall cabinet, so I might actually just put this on the wall which would make things easier, and then all of that stuff could pretty much just go. All of these are just empty boxes, I've got paint cans on the top, so they can be put on a shelf high up out of the way somewhere, and then I can have my laser here, which means I could eventually get around to sorting this out, because this would be my outfeed table for the laser, which means I can lift the laser up and have longer boards under here to do nice long shakutli boards and things like that. But what I do need to think about is how deep I'm going to go because my mallets are thick. They are some thick boys. So obviously that needs to fit under the laser enough for it to engrave on top. And obviously if I want to make some giant mallets again, which I do plan on making because I don't have one for my own wall. So they're going to be probably about that thick. 
which means it has to be deep enough in order to fit that under there as well. So there you go, Brookswood 2024 update video done, all dusted, time to go home. I have a lot to do, so I need to get my little tush and gear and start making some things. I am slowly running out of time to do what I want to do, especially before making. I've got a lot of videos to make. There's going to be videos on everything I'm doing, so all the upgrades, all the updates, the laser, the duct work, cutting everything down, making the mallets. But we've got a few more things to talk about. First thing I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching the videos, for liking, subscribing, for comments, for everything. I cannot put into words how much I appreciate you. At time of recording, I have almost hit 800 subscribers and for me that's more than I thought so thank you patreon is something that I haven't really pushed too much but patreon is a way to help support what I do if you like what I do if you enjoy seeing my videos if you think I'm funny like I think I'm funny then please consider joining up to be a patreon it doesn't cost a lot I've got different tiers for you to think about but you get lots of perks benefits discounts on all of my things that I do. Now I've got to get going because I've got a lot to do in a very small amount of time. But there is one more thing I want to talk about and that is Maker Central. If you're going to Maker Central this year, which is happening in May, then why don't you come and see me at my stall? Because I have managed to get a stall this year. My plan is to have my mallets that you can buy, my plan is to have a weapons rack full of all of the lovely things you can see. So if you want to come and see the battle axe I made or the pumpkin smasher that I did for Halloween, then come along and see the stool. And you can hold them, feel them, feel the weight of this one because this is heavy. Or if you want to purchase a usable version of this one, then they're going to be available too. Or how about you fancy uh, getting your hands on one of these? So. I'm going to be doing a build your own maker's mallet. So I'm going to have a table there where you can pick from a box of parts. You can glue them together. Lumberjack have been nice enough to give me some tools. So me or my fantastic neighbor that will be coming with me to help me will then shape these together. You can then pick your own fantastic handle. You can glue your own handle in and then hopefully Rubio will be there on the same stool where you can take it over to them and they will help you finish these beautiful little mallets that you can take home. I hope this works. It's a fun little interactive experience for you to then take home your new mallets. I'm not sure how much all the prices are going to be, but there's going to be an option. So, if you're going to make a central this year, 18th and 19th of May, then come to my stall, hang out for a bit, get a photo, get yourself a mallet or a mini mallet, and we'll have an amazing weekend. Now, like I said, I've got some stuff to do, so I've really got to get on. So yeah, big things for Bricks of Builds in 2024. I am joint excited and nervous as hell. So yeah, I gotta crack on and you better get going. See you later. It's okay, precious. It's okay, I would never really get rid of you. I wouldn't let anyone hurt you, okay? Now. Close your eyes. Okay. Shh. Close your eyes. <gasps>